Okay, so this video is going to be looking at the structures and functions of the ear. The two dot points that we're going to start with are describe the anatomy and function of the human ear, including the pinna, tympanic membrane, ear ossicles, oval window, round window, cochlea, organ of cordy, auditory nerve, and the role of the eustachian tube. So our ear is a great organ. It allows us to detect sound waves in our environment and then those get sent to our brain for interpretation. This image here shows a basic outline of the human ear. And as you can see, it is broken into three sections, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. And what we're going to do is have a look at the structures in each and their different functions. So we obviously start with the outer ear or the external ear as it is sometimes referred. And the part on the outside that we see is known as the pinna. And this funnel-like shape of our outer ear helps to direct the sound waves into our ear canal. Once the sound waves have entered our ear canal, they are funneled along the canal to the eardrum, which is also known as our tympanic membrane, and the waves cause it to vibrate. Once we get to the eardrum, we're now into the middle ear, which is made up mostly of the ear ossicles, or the little bones, and the oval window. So as the sound wave strikes the eardrum, the ossicles on the other side vibrate and help to pass that vibration on. The ear ossicles are the three smallest bones in the body. Together they could actually fit onto a five cent coin. So the order that they vibrate in is the malleus or the hammer, onto the incus or the anvil and the stapes or the stirrups. So it's good to know the two different names for all of the three bones. Once the vibrations are passed along the three bones, the stapes causes the oval window to vibrate and this passes the message through into the inner ear. So the inner ear is filled with fluid and then as the fluid changes its shape or flows differently, it causes an electrochemical impulse to form. The inner ear contains the vestibule, semicircular canals and the cochlea. Now the vestibule and semicircular canals are not involved in hearing, but they help us with our balance and our cochlea, cochlea sorry, is the most important part of our ear as it's here where the message is detected. So the organ of cordy is housed in the cochlea and it is here that waves are converted into electrochemical impulses and sent to the brain via the auditory nerve. So we'll be looking at the organ of cordy and its importance in a little bit more detail later on. So the dot point asks us to outline the role of the eustachian tube and basically the role of the eustachian tube is to equalise air pressure in our ear by bringing in air from the mouth. So when we yawn, it helps us to equalize the pressure so we don't have that build up in our ears. Now that we've looked at the different parts of the ear, and we'll be looking at them in a little bit more detail when we do the secondary source investigation, we need to outline the path of a sound wave as it moves through the external, middle and inner ear and identify the energy transformations that occur. Sound moves from the outer ear to the inner ear through a number of different structures. And now we're going to have a look at the order of the structures based on whether they're found in the outer, inner or the middle ear. So in the outer ear, sound is transmitted as a wave through air in the auditory canal to the outer layer of the tympanic membrane. From here we move into the middle ear where vibrations from the eardrum are conveyed through this airfield chamber by the vibrating of the interconnecting bones to the oval window of the inner ear. Once we get to the inner ear and the stapes vibrates the oval window, we have a pressure wave that's set up in the fluid that's contained within the inner ear. This helps to change and vibrate the bacillar membrane, which stimulates the hair cells of the organ of cordy, which are inside our cochlea. And this then sends a message along the nerve fibers to the brain where they are interpreted. So there are a number of energy transformations that occur in order to allow us to detect sounds. So obviously we start with sound energy, which is converted into mechanical energy, and then lastly, electrochemical energy, which is sent to the brain. These energy transformations occur at various places within the ear, and we need to be able to identify where in the ear the change from sound to mechanical to electrochemical energy takes place. Sound waves travel through the air, and the pinna helps to direct those into our auditory canal. Sound energy is converted into mechanical energy, which is also known as kinetic energy, as the tympanic membrane begins to vibrate. This mechanical energy is then transmitted through the three bones of the ear ossicles to the oval window. As the vibrations pass through the perilymph or the fluid in the inner ear, a 
a pressure wave is formed and the mechanical energy is transferred into the organ of Cordy. Here the mechanical energy is now converted into electrochemical energy as information is transmitted as nerve impulses from the hair cells by the auditory nerve to the brain. Hey Mia! Mia? Mia! Yeah? What? Hey! Dude, your music is way too loud. You're gonna kill your ears. Music's better loud. Come on, Zoe. Hey, I'm a fan of loud music too, but it's important to protect your ears. Otherwise, you won't be able to hear music at all, let alone make it. Listen. I'm all ears. Ha ha. But seriously, without our ears, the sounds we hear are really just vibrations. Well, when we listen to music, I can feel the vibration of it sometimes. Yeah, that's what sound waves are. The different parts of the ear work together to interpret the sound waves and send them to the brain so it can tell us what exactly we're hearing. Different parts? Like earlobes? <laughs> well, the earlobes are part of the outer ear. The outer ear is all curvy and windy. Its shape helps funnel sound into the ear canal. The canal is the hole in your ears? That's it. The ear canal leads to your eardrum, the first stop for sound. The eardrum is a membrane inside the ear that vibrates when sound hits it. Like a real drum. Yeah, the eardrum is the gateway to the middle ear. Inside the middle ear are three tiny bones, the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. When sound enters the middle ear, each of these tiny bones vibrate and pass the sound on further into the inner ear. Like a chain reaction? It kind of is. Now the inner ear is a bit more complex, with lots of little passages. Like a maze? A lot like a maze. Deep within that maze is the cochlea. Reaching the cochlea is like reaching the finish line for sounds. The cochlea turns the sound waves into signals that are sent to the brain's hearing center by your nerves. The brain's hearing center? Yep, it's a special place on the outside of the brain. When a sound enters the hearing center, our brain tells us what the sound is and where it's coming from. Ah, oh, yeah, a drum, some guitar, a horn, sounds great. Guess my brain's hearing center is working pretty well. Mine too, and my inner ear is helping out with something else too. Huh? My balance. The inner ear also contains three little canals shaped like semicircles that constantly send messages to the brain, letting it know when you're about to fall or lose your balance. So damaging my ears hurts my hearing and my dancing? Yeah, and neither one of us want that. You already have two left feet. In that case, I'll definitely start watching it when it comes to my ears. Now let's see if I can dance through this. The ears are pretty complex organs, and they help us interpret sound. You can only see the outer ear, but there's a middle and inner part of the ear, too. And all three parts work together to send sound info to the brain for interpretation. Not only do your ears affect your hearing, but your inner ear helps you keep your balance, too. How'd that sound? Mia, that was music to my ears.